So today we are going to be transforming our garage into a dance studio. Been dancing since we were really young and my brother actually majors at Pace University in commercial dance. Due to the pandemic and us all being stuck at home, we obviously have to adjust and accommodate especially for any performing arts majors, musical theater, dance, anything really and it's hard with limited space. So for the first semester being home obviously AJ just danced in our living room and now that we are home for another semester and potentially another who knows how long this is going to last, my mom decided to take the initiative of turning our garage into a dance space. After everything was removed from the garage, which took about a month on itself, it took about another month to build the dance studio and AJ started using it beginning of October. This video is just going to outline everything my mom and I did, mostly my mom, over the past two months to transform this. And we will walk you through step by step in case you want to transform your garage too. So the first step obviously was to clean out the garage, which started with boxes being piled high and just removing and going through all of that. So this isn't even our starting place. My mom actually started doing this about a month ago. It was no joke. Every single row, all the way to the top of boxes. Honestly, this is like insane. I've never seen it this clear and this empty. So I'm videotaping from here on out and logging this journey and I'll check back in with you on the next step. Hi, I'm going to be power washing the cement floor to get it nice and clean before we do the ceiling of the garage floor. was to seal the garage floor. We needed to seal the garage floor because it's made of concrete. So we're afraid during wetter weather that the moisture will come up and affect the wood and then warp some of the wood. So we definitely had to put sealer on it and I ended up doing three coats, no, actually four coats of sealer because I'm a little paranoid. <laughs> tell me some different ways to put the sealer onto the concrete floor. Some have told me to use a roller, some have told me to spray, but I happen to have a sponge mop that I think might work okay. So I'm gonna try to do that. It's a small area, so hopefully it'll come out well. I will start doing that and we'll see how it turns out. Wish me luck. Got my gloves on for protection. Don't wanna hurt my beautiful hands. Let them touch your surface, you'll turn to so I've given it about two hours to dry and let's go take a look and see if it's ready for coat number two. Step number three is to add some spring to the floor. Now, since we are on a budget, this method was chosen via pool noodles and we went to the 99 cent store to buy how many pool noodles? I overbought. I bought like <laughs> Noodles. But I think we only needed about 300, no, 300, no, 300 pieces, 80. 83, 5, 50, each one. All I really needed was 30 to 40 pool noodles. The spring from the pool noodles basically will replace what an expensive spring is in dance studios and it will really protect the dancer's knees and just body and add that extra level of comfort that's what you don't get when you're in your living room. Step four is to paint the wall. So obviously this is optional based on what your garage looks like because if your walls already look fine you don't need to paint them but we just bought some really easy white paint and just painted the side of the mirror wall because originally that wasn't there. It was a three car garage and that got put up when we originally bought this house, but it was just never painted. So we took care of that by painting it together, which was loads of fun. <laughs> loads of fun. I'm not a painter. Step five is to buy the actual wood. You need two different types of wood for your dance floor. The first type of wood you want is going to be the bottom layer, which would be the OSB wood. That tends to be a very cheap wood. It's a little splintery, so be really careful. And then on top of that, we want to do the tongue and groove which is a little bit more sturdy of a board and that goes on top. And you can buy this at your local lumber shop. That's what we did. 
Step number six is to actually cut and glue the pool noodles onto the wood, the first layer, which is the OSB. So my mom cut all the noodles by hand, making sure that they were pretty precise so that way they would all lay evenly. And then I did the next step of gluing them onto the boards using liquid nail. Hello everyone. So today we are doing some pool noodle attachments. So we're currently measuring it all out to figure out the logistics. We're kind of doing a checkerboard style and then we're gonna glue them all down and just let it dry. And then we would flip this over. So it's springy. First board done. Woo. Oh, and it was interesting. We just busted it all out. We did a checkerboard pattern, just doing every other one, and then um, just waiting for it to dry. The liquid nail is really strong, so it's great glue and will work perfectly for the pool noodles. Yeah, you know, we averaged about 50 pool noodles on each OSB board, and the pool noodles, just so you know, I cut them to about an inch long. Step number seven is to actually flip the boards. We gave it about a day, two days to dry to make sure that liquid nail was really on there. And then we flipped all of them and this we let sit for a little while because we wanted it to sink in because the pool noodles will lose a little bit of their cushion as the weight is on it. So flip them over, let them sit for two days. We let it sit for a really long time because we were waiting for the marley to come in. So it was just kind of sitting there and sinking. Um, into the ground. Step number eight is to place the next layer of wood on top. These are the tongue and groove boards. So now that we have put down the bottom layer, the OSB, we are going to put the tongue and groove in and we're going to do it where we cover each of the seams because you don't want the seams to be lining up with the seams for the tongue and groove pieces. So I'm really excited. I'm standing on it. Oh. Three, two, one. The air in this room's getting thin. My patience for you is getting thinner Don't care if you're lonely again So step number nine is the actual mirrors. Now, because... Uh, <laughs> it was tough! It was challenging! <laughs> to get an actual, like, large dance studio mirror that you see in professional dance studios is really expensive and they take a while to come in. It was just the price was outrageous so we decided to get long bath mirrors that we found at Home Depot. For the length of our garage they didn't fit uh, vertically just to do one layer so we had to do it horizontally with two layers which made us a little bit nervous because it's just a mirror on top of a mirror nothing to really hold it. The bottom layer is held up by a rail. A rail. Yeah. Today we are installing the mirrors. Mirrors! These are J-molds. They're 72 inches. We have three of them. Those are gonna line the bottom and we're marking them every 16 inches where the studs are. And then we're leaving a 12 inch gap here for a shelf later. And the top layer was just gonna be held up by glue. So we weren't sure if that was gonna work. We saw nothing on that like YouTube before. We only saw the one layer. So we were really worried, but it worked out. Yeah, we ended up putting clips all around the edges of the mirror, the rail on the bottom. And we gave each mirror like 48 to like 72 hours to dry each mirror. And there's six of them because we were so nervous. Yeah. So, but in the long run, it worked. It worked out. And we just held it up clips in between the days. And then we would remove the clips and put the next mirror up just to make sure that glue was really hardening and curing. Step number 10 is actually taping the wood boards. Okay, so I'm inside the dance room now. And what you are seeing behind me is some tape that I've laid down. I started to put some tape on the seam. It's just a very simple um, duct type of tape. So far in this whole entire construction, we have not yet used one single nail. And the reason why I'm doing that is I'm afraid that the nail will pop up through the marley and we of course don't want that. So in order to help with no movement on the boards, I figured I would tape up the seams. Not sure if that would really help, but what the heck. Step number 11 was to put any accessories up, the shelves and the TV, while we were waiting for the Marley. So we decided to put the TV up and that was the first thing that I wanted to go up because it was the hardest thing to put up and then it's kind of set the center stage for the rest of the room. And if you're planning on recording with yourself dancing, just having a nice shelf so you can put your phone on, a speaker, your laptop is always really good as well. And a shout out to all the community of Nextdoor. They came through when they wanted to give us a TV, it was crazy. The outpouring to help us make this dance studio was amazing. And to them, my heart. Step number 12 is the arrival of the Marley, rolling it out and taping it all up. So I ordered the Marley weeks before I started this to get it going so it would come relatively in time when we were ready. And I ordered it from this company called Great Mats. You can find them at greatmats.com. They are actually one of the country's leading dance floor manufacturers. It was a Marley that um, was able to be tapped on as well because 
This beautiful girl over here is our star tapper, and we wanted to make sure that she was able to enjoy the room as well. Marley is down. We rolled it all out, the three rolls we had, and we are gonna let it sit for 24 hours and let it flatten out, and then we'll do the taping. Then I taped it. I had a roll of Marley ordered with it. We taped all the seams down. I cut the edges, and then I taped the edges to the floor below. So it went from the top down to the OSB. Step number 13 is the curtain. We used our garage, obviously as storage before, and also as kind of like our pantry. We don't really have like a pantry in this house. And with AJ dancing and taking Zoom classes, it just really did not look good with everything back there. So we put up this curtain to protect that and just kind of give it a nice background. So we got the rod from Amazon and the hooks we got from Bed Bath & Beyond for really cheap. We got them for $3.99 each. I think it was. It was ridiculous. So we got the curtains off of Amazon. We tried out two different colors, brown and dark gray. AJ got a pick and he picked the dark gray, which is what is behind us. But yeah, that's pretty much, that's all that goes into the curtains and we installed it and we got the sliding one so we can just move them side to side. Step number 14 was the sliding door. We decided to add a sliding door between the dance studio and the other space in the garage for the single car, just because if someone's like me and my mom's pulling in our car and AJ's in here dancing, it gives a little bit of privacy so AJ doesn't get distracted or like I don't get distracted and it just closes it off from any of us who may be in the other room. So that was a very long two month process, but 100% worth it. And those were all the steps that went into creating this amazing space. And thank you mom for putting in all your hard work and making this happen for AJ and myself. Of course, the beautiful dancers. I'm gonna make sure to have everything linked below, stores we shopped at, uh, Amazon links, videos we watched that were really helpful that might go into a little bit more detail. Um, just really a bunch of resources. I'm not sure if I'm gonna just list them or create a Google Doc for everyone, but make sure to check that out in the description Description. It'll definitely be down there so you can get all the help you need and if you have any questions that we didn't answer or you need a little bit of clarification on feel free to comment down below or DM me on Instagram. Anyways, thank you so much for watching. I know this was a long video but I really hope it was informative and helped you out in your process of building a dance studio in your garage. And good luck to you and your dancers. Three, two, one. The air in this room's getting thin. My patience for you is getting thinner. Don't care. Please don't forget to like and subscribe to this channel for more videos like this one. Thanks so much for watching. Bye. I can't take this blast I'm over the moon.